Uh, systems design hardware and software platform. Uh, so, uh, you know, when you make your website uh, or your uh, e-commerce application, you need to have hardware and software platforms, system design specifications, description of the main components of the system and the relationships to one another. So uh, you need to think about, you know, what you want to do. Two components of system design. We've got logic design and physical design. Logic design is how the data flow diagrams. Do you guys know what's a data flow diagram? Do you know what's the data? Uh, do you know what's the data flow? Basically, it shows you know if people log in, uh, then they will have two options. One option is you do this. One option you do that. Uh, if you want to uh, buy something online, these are the steps uh, you choose. You add to the cart. You check out. Do you see? So you need to have some sort of a logical design of how your website. The procedures of the system, and maybe a flow chart. You guys know what's a flow chart? Okay, flow chart. And then you need the physical design, which is uh, the actual software components, the models, and so on. So maybe in our case, we're using this WordPress. There are some other applications that can do that. Or maybe you have your own software that you make online. Let's say eBay, probably they have their own uh, entire system that will does the you know, the bidding and so on. A logic design, this would be like an example. You know, you've got the website, the customer, the customer make a request to verify, log in, log in, go to the database, check if the person is there or not. It will display the catalog pages. Uh, you check the database of catalogs. Uh, if you're going to ship a product, purchase a product, to go to the orders database. So this is a simple of a logic, how the process works. And a physical design uh, will be, uh, you know, let's say here you've got the customer, they can see it on a mobile phone, on a tablet, on a PC, uh, you know, connect to the internet. And then here your firm website, this is your server. And then you've got here the, you know, whether, what type of server you have. Quad core, this is like a type of a server. Uh, how much storage, five terabytes. And then here is what, you know, the server in, on the back end. We have a shopping cart mail server, online catalog, ad server. So maybe if we want in our website to display ads, we need to connect to, let's say, Google database of ads or maybe some other ads database. Or we have our own database for ads. What do you guys think? Maybe we should have in our site an ad server. It's basically another plugin if you are using a WordPress. And this plugin, it allow you to enter ads. So you actually make the ad and then it will appear on the website. And then those ads, it's ours. So we can make an ad for next event or ad for a next project or a next product. <laughs> uh, we, you need to host your own or your outsource. Do you guys know outsourcing and host your own? No, we are outsourcing. No, no, you know, it may be outsourcing. Why outsourcing? Because maybe it's cheaper. If you want to do it your own, then uh, you need to have your own server, and your server needs to be connected to the internet. You need to maintain the server, install all of the platform and the web servers and so on. So which one is build, uh, better, build uh, your own or you outsource? Now, if you build your own, it will require a team that has diverse skills, choice of software tools, and you need to manage risks and possible benefits. Host versus uh, uh, host your own versus outsourcing. Uh, that's when you go hosting. Host company responsible for ensuring the site is accessible 24 hours. You pay the monthly fee. Co-location, firm purchases or leases web servers, control over its platform. Servers located at the vendor facility. So here, if you have your own server, then you need to manage the server. You buy it, you set it up, take care of it, or you outsource it where you just rent somewhere else. And here, choices in building and hosting. You build your site, either you host it, you do it in-house. What is the power of in-house building your website? You have total control, right? It's completely in-house, you build it in and you host it in. That's a 100% control. Maybe you want to build your site, you outsource it. You have mixed responsibility. You know, someone will be responsible if something goes wrong. And for you, uh, you can have your hosting in your site. So. You have the server with you, but someone else have the management. 
or maybe you want to do complete outsource for the hosting and the website so you go to some other party they host it they manage it they uh, take everything and you know maybe you pay them for or maybe you can have your website developed by your own team but it's on some other facility uh, host. That's you have also mixed responsibility. So here, mixed responsibility, completely in-house, completely out outsourced. Here we have the curly hair and apple, you know. Let's see. How does a small niche website such as naturallycurly.com become profitable? Do you guys know what's naturallycurly.com? It's a website that will take care of your hair you see uh, they use cloud computing social media reduced costs so do you know what's cloud computing cloud computing it's the idea of do you guys know like a farm do you know the farm inside the farm you have a lot of cows and they produce a lot of milk you can have your own cow in your home and you produce your own milk you need to take care of the cow maybe you can take your cow put it in some sort of a farm then you get the return you can have your own server you can go to a farm of servers a lot of servers are there and all of these servers they work together do you see so if someone of, if one of them is broken there's another one that will take the job so that's the idea of cloud computing and you use social media you know if you look at facebook do you know how many servers they have they have a lot of servers but if one of them breaks the other ones will take care. You don't feel that someone is broken. The application economy changed the economy of software production and e-commerce. Now, you know, there is... Uh, I was talking to some of the companies here in Yemen. Uh, you're talking about a big corporation. They have a lot of servers uh, for their, uh, you know, customer database. Or Now, they have the option to go on the Internet. And uh, everyone inside the company, they use the servers. Servers maybe in some other country. But the users, they log into the servers, and the servers are rented there. Do you see? So this is changing how businesses work. You don't have to have your own servers. or it becomes expensive to maintain them and administrate them and update them. So you just outsource it. You need to test your website, implementation and maintenance. You know what's testing? <coughs> Unit testing, yes. system testing, yes. acceptance test. What is the idea of acceptance test? You want to make sure that you accept all of the requirements are fulfilled. Implementation and maintenance, your maintenance is ongoing, maintenance costs, similar to development costs. You also want to do benchmarking. Do you know what's benchmarking? Compare. You compare, how is your site compared with others? How is your performance of your uh, application compared with everyone else? Yeah, some sort of an advantage, you know, how you're doing compared with others. Let's say all of the other people, uh, their websites, they respond in one millisecond. And your site responds in two milliseconds. Then you know you're a little bit behind. Factors in website optimization. Uh, what page content you have, you want to optimize. Do you know the word optimize? Optimize is that you get the best, do you see? So how can you get the best performance, uh, best response, best uh, you know visual? Uh, page generation, server response time, device base accelerator, efficiency resource allocation. Uh, a website, some websites may, or an application, may require a lot of processing. Others may be optimized. They don't do a lot of processing. You see? Uh, maybe over the network. Some websites are very slow. Some websites are very fast. That's the idea of optimization. You want your, op your website or to be very optimized, which means it's very fast, doesn't take a lot of resources, doesn't take a big memory. So how can you make sure that your application will get you the best results? Simple multi-tiered website architecture. System architecture, uh, arrangement of software, machinery, tasks, and information system needs to achieve a specific functionality. Uh, uh, Two-tier web server and database. Multi-tier web application server, back-end legacy database. Let me give you an example of a bank. Inside a bank, you've got a server that has all of customer account numbers. Right? There's another server that will allow 
your customers to access their account information through SMS. Another server will allow customers to access their information through the ATM. Other system will allow you to connect your account from, let's say, another country through Visa network. Do you see? So here you've got this architecture of your system. You have database for account, customer account numbers and balances. Another server that will handle any ATM request. Another server will handle any international request. Another server will deal with the SMS. Another server that is on the branch level. Do you see? So here we've got several tiles. One here, uh, you know, one here for database. Here for uh, web application. Here for international connection. So you need to kind of think about how the architecture will work. Just like when you build a home. You build a home, you need to have an architecture. This is kitchen, it will service this level, or it will service those two. See? Uh, here we've got an example. This is like database, web server, and then customers can request. When the customer does, they connect directly to the uh, uh, content management? Maybe not. It goes to the web server. The web server will, you know, communicate with this other server. So sometimes it can be complicated. How is the database and how is this e-commerce is working? Here we've got those uh, web server, middle layer, back end layer. So here may be a web server that people access on the web. This is the, e the database server or the ad server. And here maybe there's an HR system that connects or maybe uh, a finance department connects to the same database. Do you see? If you think about our uh, university uh, system, you know, students, they can access uh, accounts, customer accounts, uh, student payments, uh, HR, courses available. So here we can have a multi-tier e-commerce architecture. When we talk about web server software, Apache, do you guys know what's Apache? There's an Apache in this Microsoft Internet uh, Information Systems. Uh, so the Apache, it's, uh, it says here it's 52% of the market. It works with Unix, Linux operating systems. This is open source. Do you guys know the idea of open source? Yes. So open source, it means it's a software that's available. Anyone can see. So okay. You can and you can even modify and change. On the other hand, we've got this Microsoft, which is based on Microsoft. It's a Windows based, and it's a second major. It has only 20% of the market. Uh, this is basic functionality provided by web servers. Uh, they process the HTTP requests. Uh, security services, they do the security level, like verifying username and password. For example, if you use Microsoft, then you authenticate through Microsoft. Uh, if you do it, on a, then you need to have their own uh, security uh, services. The file transfer protocol that permits the search engine the data capture, email, ability to send or receive emails, site management tools, calculate display, key site statistics, unique visitors. So these are some of the functionalities that the web server will provide you. So it, the web server, it's you know where the data is stored. Just like uh, sometimes you have an iOS or your iPhone, that's the you know the that's the you know the platform that provides. So here you need for a website to have a web server. Site management tools, like basic tools, uh, includes all uh, web server, verify the links on the page are still valid, identify orphan files. Uh, so that's site management tools. Uh, you can also use a third-party software for advanced management. Monitor customer purchases, marketing campaign effectiveness, web trends, Google Analytics. Do we have Google Analytics? So maybe we need to set up a Google Analytics. Let's, uh, let's do this. So dynamic page generation tools. We can get dynamic page generation content stores in a database and it fits when needed. Uh, the idea of dynamic page generation is sometimes uh, if you go to the website, all of the information is on this database. But sometimes it will... Uh, the web server will be able to generate the pages for you to make it a little bit faster. Okay. Uh, there are some tools like ODBC. ODBC, it's, uh, it allows you to access other databases. Okay. For example, uh, you know, if you go to the website, then the website is on a web server. But when you request, you want to check the information or news or 
it needs to connect to some database so that is going to create a connection it lowers the menu cost permits easy online market segmentations it enables cost free price discrimination it enables content management systems so that's the power of this generation tools that can um, help you uh, you know manage the website application servers web application servers provide specific business functionality requirements for a website types of middleware isolate business applications from web servers sometimes you don't want all of your bank let's say if you're a bank all of your bank information to be ready on the internet it can be hacked so maybe you have a web server there or you have a middleware that is going to check only people can access the, the bank database only if you have a username and a password or only if you come with this special authentication or if only if you have a web account if you don't have a web account then your information doesn't come so that's another way of security single function application replaced by integrated software tools completing all functionality needed for e-commerce sites e-commerce merchant server uh, software provide basic functionality for sale uh, maybe if in our case uh, you know on wordpress they have this woocommerce have you heard of woocommerce no yeah to build an e-commerce site so that's an application it's a software that is going to help you with the online catalog the shopping cart the credit card processing you see so the idea here is that there's a lot of software that can do certain functions just like those plugins we have seen uh, this merchant can also integrate environments and most functionality needed it can give you all of these benefits can calculate the tax for you okay uh, compliance standards so maybe there is uh, for example the European Union you have to have value-added tax and uh, you you have to encrypt your data in a certain way so what do you do get the software that does that for you web server open source options up for a small firm so if you're a small firm you can host it uh, you get some uh, solutions maybe this Yahoo merchant solution uh, open source uh, require maybe programmer with some expertise but it can enable you to build a truly custom site just like the one we're doing for this project hardware platform is uh, underlying computer requirements what type of server you have uh, objective enough platform capacity to meet peak demand do you guys know the idea of peak demand peak demand is sometimes let's say on friday before eat everyone is shopping there so it can be very a lot of requests so the server will be doing like a lot of people using the same machine become important to understand these factors and how they affect speed capacity and scalability of the site right sizing for hardware so custom demands factors overall demand so you want to think about how many people will be accessing the database at the same time for example oracle or some other uh, software vendors they may tell you we will give you the software maximum 500 people at the same time do you see nature of customer requests a uh, type of content is the content dynamic so is it always connected to the database or just static uh, security requirements number of items inventory how many page requests speed of the legacy application uh, scalability if you can you increase can you double your customers and it still works uh, how you scale your hardware sometimes your hardware can scale vertically where you increase processing power or horizontally multiple computers to share overload now if you go to some of these sophisticated uh, 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 data centers you know you will might find like five servers they can balance the load mm -hmm. so all the five work at the same time or maybe one machine that has a lot of processors inside so it can process more at the same time so that's another issue you may want to be concerned about and here is a vertical horizontal faster computers a cluster uh, uh, appliance servers segment overload batch requests aggregate user data cache <coughs> so all of these techniques to manage the overall load on the server how can you improve your architecture these are also other techniques to improve your architecture 